so year two, we're going to do a bit of exploring, thinking about some art and particularly an artist for a few weeks now. So last term, if you remember, we learned about the artist Paul Klee. Can any of you remember anything about him or his artwork? The main piece of artwork we looked at, remember, was Castle and Sun. And we looked at the shapes that were used in it, the colours, and you had a go at creating your own piece of artwork like his painting, Castle and Sun. So we're going to move away from Paul Klee and we're going to think about a new artist, an Inuit artist. So that means someone who comes from the Arctic. Her name is Kenoyuak Ashavak. So the J, the J in her first name, you don't make the J sound, we make a Y sound. Kenoyuak Ashavak. So if you can say her name, Kenoyuak Ashavak. So here is a photograph of her. She is no longer alive. She died in 2013. But that's what she looked like later on in life. So, Kenoyuak Ashabak. She was born in 1927 and died in 2013 or 2013. She was born in Canada in the Arctic part of Canada. And she was a successful, so that means she did very well, Inuit artist. So the people she came from, she was Canadian, but the kind of group of people that she came from were the Inuk, or sometimes together they, along with other people, are called the Inuit. So just like our polar bear son story, that is an Inuit traditional story. She was an Inuit artist. So Inuit art, art created by people from the Arctic Circle. So her family were traditionally, again, like our polar bear son story, traditionally hunters, trappers, and something called nomads. So a nomad or nomads are people who have no permanent home and they travel a lot. And this is a photograph of her when she was younger and she was about 14 or 15 years old. So Kenoyuak Ashavak, say her name again, Kenoyuak Ashavak. Her family moved from camp to camp, depending on when food ran out and where it could be found. In winter, her family would build and live in an igloo. When she was about 23 years old, she got really sick. She spent three years in hospital getting better. And while she was there, she learned how to make dolls, do beadwork and make stone cut prints. Now, I'm sure you know what dolls are. Beadwork, where beads are sewn onto clothes. And stone cut prints, I'm going to explain what that means in a minute. So what she is most famous for, her artwork, are drawings. And she always starts her artwork, whether it is just drawings or the stone cut prints, by doing drawings using pencil and colouring pencils. So this is the artwork that she is known for, and not just in Canada, she is known for this all over the world. Pieces of her art are hung in galleries all over the world. Her art reflected her life. Because she spent most of her life living off the Arctic land, and surrounded by the animals and nature of the Arctic, this is what is in her art. So I'm going to share a video with you, a um, short video um, about her. It's got an interview with her as well. She didn't ever speak English, 
She spoke her native language, uh, the Inuit language, the Inuk language. Um, there are subtitles. Do not worry if you cannot read them because they do move quite quickly. Obviously, if you can read some, great. OK, but just get an idea because it shows you in the video her doing some of her artwork. She would always start by drawing, and so her drawings are hung in galleries all over the world. But then some of her drawings are then also made into stone cut print. So that means her drawing was then chiseled away and sculpted into a piece of stone. You can see someone doing it for her. It wasn't she wasn't the one who actually did the sculpting into the stone, but cutting away the shape that she had already drawn into the stone. Then ink or paint is rolled on top of that stone where it's been chiseled away. Then paper is put down on top of that paint, pressed down and then peeled back up. So you can see here it's being peeled back up the paper. So that the impression of her drawing that has been carved into the stone has now been pressed onto the paper. So stone cut because the stone has been cut and then prints is then printed onto paper. Stone cut prints. So here is another that's her on the left. Uh, you work Ashavak, watching as one of her drawings is, be, is being turned into a stone cut print. And again, it, the paper is being peeled back off. So while her art reflected the Arctic surroundings, it was not realistic. So you may have noticed on the few pieces of art that you've seen of the animals that she drew and coloured in, that's not what they really look like. She used her imagination a bit, and if you no noticed in the video we saw, she also said it was more about how she was feeling. She know it wasn't about exactly trying to capture what the animals or the landscape look like. The feeling 
of what she got from those animals or being in the Arctic. She used lots of bright colours and added lots of exaggerated features. And I think once you get to know her artwork, you will always then find it quite easy to recognise her artwork because she has a very what's called distinctive or unique style. Only she really creates art like she does. So she added features like exaggerated feathers and limbs. So some body parts of the animals are very long. The feathers that would normally be as long as they are in her artwork are very long. Use very bright colours that are not the true colours of the animals. And sometimes you'll see she merged animals together. So kind of body parts and morphed into two animals becoming sort of one animal. The art was created out of how she felt. So you can probably understand why Miss Drayton really likes her artwork, because one of her favourite things to draw, not Miss Drayton's, Kenoya Ashavak's favourite things to draw, were and print were owls. Partly because there are quite a lot of owl species in the Arctic. Most famous being the snowy owl. But the snowy owl is white with a few speckles. Does not look like the owls that Kanoyuak Ashabak's artwork have. So they're very bright colours, exaggerated feathers. I went to Canada a few years ago, well, several years in a row, when I was first introduced to Kanoyuak Ashabak's artwork. And so I was. Uh, very, I really liked it. So I uh, treated myself to her. I've got a whole book with um, pieces of her artwork in. So I've scanned some of them so that you get to see quite a few. Um, we won't do them all this week. We'll have another look at some more next week. But as we go through the ones I'm going to share with you today, what I like to think about is whether obviously you like the art. Remember, just because Miss Drayton likes her art doesn't mean I like all her pieces and there's certainly ones I prefer. Think of I enjoy looking at more than others, and equally, just because Miss Drayton likes her artwork doesn't mean you have to. We all have different opinions, and art is what we call subjective, so we can like different things, and there's nothing wrong with that. Okay, so you decide as we go through them do you like the artwork, each piece? What is it you like about them? What can you notice about that particular piece of artwork? So it's your personal response when you look at the artwork. How does the artwork make you feel? And probably just like Miss Drayton, some you are going to like more than others. OK. So let's go through it again. So as you look at her artwork, think about and maybe if you've got an adult with you, talk about these things. So do you like this artwork? And if so, or if not, why? How does the artwork make you feel? Do you like the colours and shapes that have been used? Which is your favourite piece of artwork of hers that you have seen so far? So that final question you obviously can't really answer or think about till we've gone through all the ones I'm going to share with you today. So here's one that was created in 2002 called Swans at Sunset. This was in 1999, and it's called Oracle. This one from 2002, called Owl's Treasure. This one from 2011 called Six Part Harmony. Can you think why it's called Six Part? And do you know what the word harmony means? So why Six Part Harmony? This one from 2004 called Decorative Char. So char is a type of fish, the name of the fish. 
But remember, it's not realistic. That isn't necessarily really what the charfish looks like. From 2004, loons protect the owl. So the loons are the bird, the other birds that are around surrounding the owl that's in the middle. From 2005, this is called Beautiful Fish. From 1999, this is called Tapestry of Owls. From 2000, Ravens Return. So you may remember we talked about ravens when we learned about the Tower of London. So ravens are a type of bird. Two thousand and ten, this is called Between Friends. So I've collected them all together, a little bit smaller now. Have a little think about those questions I set. So do you like the artwork? Obviously it may be that you like some more than others. Or it may be not the kind of artwork that you do like, and that is okay. Maybe you could think about which is your favorite. Do you like the colors and the shapes? Do you like the fact that it's not realistic? Or would you prefer artwork that is more realistic, the more like the real animals really do look like? Do you have a favorite one? So you could type, write, or record your response to me today, answering those questions. I don't mind, you choose. <laughs>